Hey guys, Dave Keller here at Market Misbehavior. Today we're going to talk about an upside breakout in the ARK Innovation Fund. So I'm sure you're familiar with the ARK Innovation Fund, ticker ARKK. And fund manager Kathy Wood has certainly done an incredible job promoting the funds and her methodology and her approach, this promise of emerging technology, the long-term uh, value proposition of some of these names. The reality, though, is in the last 12 to 18 months, the relative performance of the ARK Innovation Fund and some of the other ARK funds has been pretty dismal. Problem is, uh, when you're underweight, some of the biggest gainers like Apple and Microsoft and Meta and favoring some of the emerging technology names like Zoom and Square and Roku, you've had a really tough go of it, right? You're sort of in the area of technology that's not really working. That's starting to change though, and you're seeing pops uh, higher in Coinbase and Tesla and, uh, and Roku and some of those others that I mentioned. As a result, uh, ARKK is actually breaking above resistance this week, and I think it could have upside potential beyond what we've seen so far. We're going to look at the uh, chart of the ARKK, the ARK Innovation Fund, also some of the top holdings, just to do a quick technical review of what we're seeing. Before we get there, if you like the sort of thinking about technical analysis, investor behavior, and uh, market psychology, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Why not? Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We would super appreciate that back. Put a comment below, which of these top holdings of the ARK Innovation Fund do you see as having the most upside potential going forward and why? Now let's look at the chart of the ARK Innovation ETF. And again, it's ARKK. There are a series of other ARK funds that I think are pretty interesting uh, to, uh, to break down as well. We're gonna focus on this one today. Now we're looking at the last two years and here in the first two thirds of the chart, you can see how the price has been fairly deteriorating and pretty consistently, except for a couple counter trend moves to the upside. Overall, this trend has been marked by lower lows and lower highs. Now, 2021 is when things really started to deteriorate. You can see the relative performance versus the S&P started to go down in a big way, and that's this bottom panel. But you'll also note in 2022, which is a pretty rough year for most stocks, right? The major averages like the S&P and the NASDAQ had a pretty tough time. You'll notice the relative strength for the most part was trending lower as well. So the problem with the ARK ETF uh, you know, in recent years has been it's underperforming when the market's going up, but it's underperforming when the market's going down. Again, the reason for that, if you dig into some of the major holdings, is that some of those emerging technology names that have just been out of favor for quite some time. Now, we're starting to see a bit of a change here. We're talking a lot on this channel about the dominance of, uh, of those mega cap growth stocks, uh, the uh, FANG stocks, or what I call the Menomina stocks. Now, we're starting to see bearish divergences, a bit of downside rotation and potential for further deterioration in some of those names that have had really good runs in 2023. Some of these beaten down emerging technology names are really starting to find their footing and move to the upside. Now, looking at the chart of the ARK Innovation Fund, I think one of the key technical events, besides the new low at the end of last year. So remember, the S&P and the Nasdaq bottomed out in October, actually rallied in the fourth quarter, which set the stage for a nice rally in the first six months of 2023. ARKK actually made a new low right into the holiday season and was uh, coming off of a $30 a share here in uh, at the beginning of this year. From there, you can see it quickly sort of bounced higher. And now we're in what's called a basing pattern, sort of this rounded uh, pattern after resistance at 45. Now, what's interesting is if you look at this level, you can see this peak in February is where we tested again here in mid-June, again in late June, and then this week we're finally rotating back above there. Now, if you think about what has happened to ARKK, again, we're way below the levels we were in 2020, 2021. But you have to remember that off the lows, if you bought the ARK Innovation Fund at the end of last year, you're up about 50 plus percent. So not a bad rally uh, year to date. Now, again, some other stocks uh, did even better, but Overall, compared to things like energy or industrials or materials, you're probably feeling pretty good owning the ARKK uh, year to date. Now, I want to zoom in a bit and just uh, focus on the last sort of uh, year, year and a half, because this August peak was sort of that last big rally before the move to the new low in December. Then we had the quick rally, a, you know, a 50% gain in about five weeks from the low at the end of December to the high at the beginning of February. Then this sort of rounded bottoming pattern, then we broke out. The reason why I think this time frame is sort of important is because you take a Fibonacci analysis, you take the high from August, you take the low here in December and then look at some of these levels. What you'll find is that this most recent level right here is a 61.8% retracement of the way back up 
to the August high. So again, take the August peak down to the December low. We broke higher and we traded up about 61.8% of the way. You'll notice we didn't even pause really at the 38.2% level. We kind of pounded right through, just a little bit of a chop, but after that sort of powered right through to the 61.8% level. I love thinking about charts like this using a Fibonacci framework, what I call it, because all that does is once you've established a range on a chart, it gives you some ideas about where we may anticipate support and resistance. One of the key levels when you have a big rally off the lows is that 61.8% level. That's sort of the point of no return. You really expect resistance there and you'd expect it to hold. If and when we break through it, that tells you most likely a 100% uh, retracement back to the previous high. So what that means is after we retest tested that level in June, again in late June, early July, and then this week, kind of breaking higher, what that suggests to me is we're now opening the door to further upside around $54 a share. That's the August peak. Now what's interesting about the chart of um, uh, the ARK Innovation Fund have taken even further data, right? We go back like the last three years, you can see how much upside there is in terms of risk versus reward. Think about how it feels like we've already had a 50% gain. How much further can it go? You have to remember that this is a fund. This is a group of stocks that have really struggled for quite some time, really for two straight years from the beginning of 2021 to the end of 2022. This is a fund that was really struggling, particularly on a relative basis. That's the bottom here. Now, again, you're starting to see some improvement. Why are we seeing that improvement? It all has to do with the names that are uh, highest, they're the largest position in the ARK Innovation Fund. Let's look quickly at the top five holdings in the uh, ARK Innovation Fund as of uh, the middle of July 2023, why the performance is so, is so good. Now, Tesla, of course, is a meaningful name because of the gain. Look at the low. We made a new low the beginning of, uh, of two th uh, beginning of January of this year. From there, we rotated from just above $100 a share to $270 a share. It peaked around $280 a share uh, just last week. So overall, we've gone from just above $100 to almost $300. That's almost a double, triple uh, by, the, uh, by this period, almost a 200% gain from the beginning of the year to where we're at now. That sort of uh, upside potential is what allows a fund like ARK Innovation Fund, even with a bunch of other positions that don't necessarily work, a name like this that starts to actually perform well is really going to help your relative performance. That's chart number one. The second one is Coinbase, and Coinbase is a really interesting one. You think about the chart of the uh, ARK Innovation Fund and that break above resistance. Coinbase is kind of in a very similar pattern uh, right now. You can take this level right here, which is sort of that uh, peak from February peak from March where we retested it. We've now retested that level and broken above it. That's why that level uh, could, be so, uh, could be so important. Another thing I would think about is, uh, you know, the upside potential on a name like this. Look at the high from November of 21. Look at the low in January. Now that we've broken out, you still have all of this space just to get to the first Fibonacci level, which is around 162. And that's actually the lower end of this uh, range that we set back here in the first quarter of 2022. So what's interesting about a lot of these names, now that they're starting to work, when you look to the left, there's a lot of upside, or what we call a lot of daylight above the current levels, a lot of opportunity to have additional gains just to get into the, 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 the ballpark of the Fibonacci analysis that we're used to using on most, uh, on most names out there. The third largest holdings, about seven, seven and a half percent of the fund is in this name, Roku. Roku, again, a strong underperformer through 2022. I mean, arguably one of the worst charts you could find. And again, even though it was down and the markets were down, it was underperforming pretty consistently. But look at what has happened. From the low at the end of last year, we had a nice rally and we'll see what the, the low was here. You can put a label on it here. So we went from around $38 up to around $76. That's a double uh, in just that little window, right? I mean, that's literally doubling the price um, in about six weeks. Uh, not too bad. From there, quite a bit of consolidation. Then you can see again from here, lost about a third of the value going from 76 down to 52, and then ro rotating right back up to, uh, to 75 and change. Similar to uh, the chart of Coinbase that we looked at, what's interesting on the chart of Roku is that once again, we're breaking above resistance, right? So if you take a previous level, resistance level is just a level where the market tells you we're, we're hitting a ceiling, right? This is where there's an exhaustion of buyers, no additional interest in pushing the price higher. We retested that level in early June and pulled back again. Today, we're actually traded above and closed right at that level. So we're really, really close. I don't know if I would say this is broken out yet, but it's very, very close to completing an upside break, it's just like we saw with uh, Coinbase. 
Zoom Video Communications ZM, probably the worst of the five that I'm going to show you here. Again, this is a, a large position, about 7% of the fund, 6.9% of the fund is in this uh, in this name as of the last uh, report. And if you look here, what's interesting about this one is it's still in a pretty consistent downtrend. And again, how do we define a downtrend? Well, very basic Charles Dow 101, lower lows and lower uh, highs, that's a downtrend. So the problem is when this stock has rallied, it really hasn't eclipsed the previous highs. As a result, Zoom's still in a downtrend. Getting above the 200-day moving average would start to make this chart look a lot more attractive for now. I would say out of the five, this is probably by far the weakest. That brings us to Squarespace, or uh, sorry, not Squarespace, Square, which is now called Block Inc. Sorry, SQ is the ticker. If you look, a nice rally off of the low here in mid-May, made a low in October, actually when the S&P and the NASDAQ did, also had a nice rally to around $90 a share in February, from there coming all the way down below 60. Then we started to rotate uh, back higher again. Now it's back above the 50-day, back above the 200-day. On a chart like this, I like to look at the moving averages to see if we're able to hold them after a breakout. So right now, a uh, uh, block is actually breaking above the 200-day moving average over the last week. The momentum is starting to be stronger. Look how the RSI was below 50 for March, April, May as we're in a downtrend. And all of a sudden, it's above 50, which is suggesting more upside momentum, right? It's in more of a bullish uh, phase. Breaking out on higher momentum, the RSI pushing higher, could be a sign of additional interest, additional buying power that's pushing that price further to the upside. What do you think about the ARK Innovation Fund here and those five largest holdings that we recap? Tesla, Coinbase, Roku, Zoom Media, and or Zoom Video Communications, and Block. Which of those five do you see as having the best upside potential going forward and why? Drop a comment below and let me know. For Mark and Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well, stay safe, have a good one.